Just give me your overall view of what we got today and what it means. Sure. I mean, actually, part of it was today's report was pretty good in some sectors relative to what, what we originally thought uh, markets thought what you would get. And particularly in some areas like like restaurant, et cetera, some of the bounce back has been has been uh, a bit quicker than uh, than you would even think. But, you know, one of the things when you so you think about where we're going to go from here, that that pace of recovery is going to now some of this has to do with you know what you get in stimulus. Presumably we're going to get some stimulus. A lot depends on what we get on vaccine. But if you don't get something significant, we are going to see a slowdown from here in terms of that rate of recovery. The rate of recovery has been pretty rapid in the last couple of months and uh, in employment. And, and it's one thing that's really important. What companies are realizing is, A, you've got a more uncertain environment going forward. You've got to be really thoughtful about your costs. The only way to maintain your margins is you've got to be really careful about, about your cost structure from here. And a lot of businesses are realizing you can operate virtually and be successful operating virtually. And, uh, and some of that, some of that, what some of those workers that intended to come back or the intention to bring back, you know, maybe a bit more deliberate from here. And by the way, we think the economy is actually in pretty good shape, but the pace of employment may lag actually how the economy does from here. So then if you have somebody like Tom Lee, who we had at the very top of our program, and I'm not sure if you had a chance to listen to our conversation or not, who makes a recommendation that now's the time to go into cyclical names, how do you parse that if you think the economy can do reasonably well, but the job market is going to remain relatively stunted. You need people to have jobs, to have money to spend for those stocks to, to work. And if businesses are going to be a little more skittish in spending, am I going to want to own industrial stocks, for example? How are we supposed to think about that then? It's actually a great question. And it, well, it's actually his point, I actually think, is a really good point. And what's ironic about what's happening now versus anything we've ever seen before, if you think about this, job recovery is going to be slow. We could end the year with the unemployment rate that's still in and around 9%, maybe a bit lower than that. And it's going to be very sticky to bring it down from here. So then you think about so what happens. A, if you believe there's more stimulus that comes in, again, you believe there's more vaccine that comes in, you can actually have an economy that's operating pretty well where, where employment is longer to recover. It also means you've got a Federal Reserve who's got a dual mandate of full employment and price stability. That's going to be uh, certainly on hold with regard to rate. And I actually think they're going to do more in terms of asset purchase, uh, because largely because the Treasury is going to have to issue more uh, from here to fund, fund uh, the existing stimulus, let alone the additional stimulus. So I actually think you can have a dynamic where the equity market, and including cyclicals, can actually perform reasonably well while the job recovery is a bit muted. By the way, you look at in some sectors like housing, and even the consumption data uh, across retail, across autos, I think it's actually pretty good. And uh, you know, will it moderate a bit from here potentially? But I actually think it's not. What well, the point he makes is, uh, is it's, it's just a very strange point in time where the jobless recovery could take a bit longer, um, but the economy broadly can actually can actually perform reasonably well. Interesting. So the economy can perform reasonably well. The stock market can do reasonably well. The Fed's going to get more engaged, which tells me that you think that yields are still going to remain pretty low. I, I don't know if 10 years at 56 yeah. basis points is your answer. You tell me. Um, but is that the dynamic? There's there's no pressure to, to lift rates because That's the right. Fed's going to get more engaged. That's right. I mean, the uh, by the way, I don't think I find the 10 year note, a 10 year note, a particularly compelling instrument today. But what it does is it keeps, if you think about what equities are, particularly what cyclical equities are, there's so much focus on the next quarter's earnings. And, and But when you bring the discount rate down and you keep it down, and this is something we you, know, you very rarely see in time, when you say you're going to keep the discount rate down on long-durated assets, which, are, which equities are, what you do is you create a, a, a potentially significant increase in, uh, in what your multiple should be and where you're more reliant on it's not necessarily this quarter's earnings, but what are what are earnings going to be over the long term? And this Fed, I mean, look at where two year two year forward rates are in treasuries. And so, you know, where are treasuries going to be two or three, four years hence? And they're still pretty darn close to zero. If that's right. And you think about 
you're trying to generate return. If you're a pension fund, you're an individual. Um, the dynamics around where equity can be lifted and I think surprise people if, uh, if that interest rate stays down for an extended period of time. And the Fed is going to, you know, they, they can't be any more clear about, uh, about how vigilant they're going to be with That's regard right. to their mandate.